la la, let's hit the dance floor. Don't work too hard, my break a backbone. Return of the Mac, the king is back though. Corvette and cash, I never like those. She saw the stone, you know how that go. Fatality, my diamonds that cold. Versace trunks, I hit my backstroke. Knock on the door, she at the back, bro. All it really take is a little taste. Allen girl, blue eyes with a little bass. Here for the thrill, I don't need a chase, sir. Wanna vibe it to get away. Shimmy, shimmy, y'all got the semi four way. Don't step out the line like this a probate. You hit the line and try to locate. This for the time, got time for no day. One, too many, I'm going. Too crazy, and I got bad ones, and they ready. A good time, so now it's in new it, we left that. Can't remember anything, but I know we got lit, 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 lit. Good times, living in the moment, feel like summertime. Obsessive nation, I know where I'm mine. The room is spinning, but I feel fine. Oh my, oh my. Chandelier, limousines, really think I'm seeing things. Read the line in mid between. Hell a light, I gotta speed up. Get home to a cold shower. Need that pronto. Look, look, look like a rave at the condo. Heck of a night in Toronto. She said, boy, you in Morocco. Pearl White mention in the top go. Fill up my cup with the pop wall. I off life in the spot though. Running at the visa. Really talking to a real life Mona Lisa. Jesus pieces hanging off the fleece. So much going on, it's hard to focus on the features. I got one. Too many, I'm going. Two. Too crazy, and I got Three. bad ones, and they ready. Four. A good time, so now it's in the week we left that. Can't remember anything, but I know we got late, late, late.
Hi, everybody. Nick Blazer here. Uh, back with the Backgammon World Championships here in Monte Carlo. Coming to you with the finals of the second chance bracket. The one loss bracket between Zdenek, Zdenek Ziska and Fernando Bracconi from Italy. Uh, should be a really good one. I'm, I'm enjoying watching everyone in the chat try to set lines and figure out what P's are. Ours, PRs are very close. I'm going to give quick break to Arda to talk. Okay, he's gone. There we go. <laughs> this should be an exciting one. Um, from what I've heard, it, it's uh, Fernando, very good player, steamrolling many people with the dice uh, along the way. And, uh, and so I think I've heard that maybe, a, is he a BMAB grandmaster or not? I, I'm not sure. I've heard we should expect some pretty good PR results from him, though. Um, yeah, yeah, excited to see how that goes. I remember Phil was saying he was watching it and that he disagreed with a lot of the plays, but who knows what that means, right? <laughs> Super close. Okay. We have a line on 4-0 now. Lauren in the chat has seen a lot of his matches and expects highly of him. I shared the the odds lines in the room too, so uh, you guys can work on that. But yeah, super excited to see this one. It's been, uh, I think, Fernando Bracconi lost his his opening match and went straight to the second chance. I'm uh, pulling together stories just in case I need them, and uh, has been fighting through. Lost to Lawrence Powell round one, and has been fighting through the fighters ever since. And made it through some tough opponents on the way. Um, who did I most recently went through? Mick Larson, Thibaut Thompson last night. Had to make his way through Patrick Didisheim and Johan Moza today. And now faced with Zdenek Ziska for his tournament life. Zdenek, of course, uh, got booted out of the undefeated bracket by Wilcox Snellings. Came back through some a tough opponent in Benjamin Lund and got his revenge uh, in a really exciting match earlier today. And here we are, seeing who's going to make it to uh, challenge Sander Lyloff in the finals tomorrow. Both would be really exciting matchups. Of course, we have the, the UBC storyline of uh, Zdenek losing out to Sander Lyloff in the contender tournament. So a uh, rematch there would be kind of cool. And, but I mean, of course, what uh, losing your first match and coming all the way back to the finals for Bracconi, that's, uh, that's a pretty exciting run as well. Basically undefeated except for that one match. From the sounds of it, we should uh, have, yeah, pretty good play in here too. I'm excited to see this. Is the ZZ and Wilcox Snelling on YouTube? Yeah, both of them are. So uh, we actually have two matches there. Go look through the last couple of days. I don't know if I remember exactly. I have the links in a, in a Word document somewhere. <laughs> I can share that later maybe. Uh, I can actually probably pull that right now. But uh, yeah, both of them really exciting. Uh, first one, I, Wilcox had to claw back from a, a major, major deficit early in the in the main bracket win to uh, win at four way two way, and then ZZ wins on uh, sixteen cube in the end, in the in the second chance bracket. Oh, spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't shake that right off the bat. But yeah, I think I got uh, links in the YouTube chat there so you can watch those. We're just waiting for the players to get in the room. They did got an intro from Arda a little bit earlier, um, announcing them for the room. We got a decent crowd in the room for this as well. Hope for an exciting matchup. Not sure we're going to have as much beer as last night, but it uh, should be a good match nonetheless. Uh, the second stream match is a super jackpot match, actually, since we don't have any left in the main bracket. And the two players there are Etta Laughlin from the United States and Akiko Yozawa. Um, we've got Phil Simborg and Steve Sachs on commentary for that one. Uh, so that should be a really exciting matchup. Michi, you want to? Mm -hmm. You do it? Oh! Yeah. Sit down there. You know, that mic. Or if you want to, would you prefer to stand with me? Yeah. Okay, yeah. let's do that. I'll bring a mic over. Okay. See on camera, I may have a special guest here. In Michihito Kagayama. How good am I at pronouncing this now? Okay. Yeah. 50%, 70%? What a, could I be better? Uh huh. <laughs> I could be better. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, come on over. Take that. Um, okay. And we had a stand last night. I can see if I can find mm -hmm. it. 
But yeah, so uh, apparently nothing too exciting going on in your tournament life at Monte Carlo so far, huh? Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> it's an amazing tournament. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's been really exciting. Oh, when you're talking, you have to get like right into the mic, uh -huh. and you'll be able to hear yourself on the speakers if, if the mic can hear you. Do you oh. hear me there? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so if you hear yourself on there. Yeah. Okay. There Oh, cool. Bill's got the stand freeze again. can be a little higher if yeah. you want to. Yay, everyone in the chat, super excited about you. Saying they got all your books. Yep, they're all really great. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. <laughs> yeah, last night we got Mark on here with the stand. We might have had to set it up a little higher. We'll figure it out, though. But you have to point it down a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you've got a chair if you wanted uh -huh. to. Yep, yep. Sweet. Pretty cloth. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Like this? Yeah, oh, that sounds really okay. good. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. I feel like like I, I'm eating a microphone. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You're supposed okay. to eat the microphone. Great. That's the idea. Yeah. So, how much do you know about Fernando Bracconi? Uh, actually, I I first met him a uh, long time ago. Maybe, maybe 20, 15 or twenty years ago. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's super cool. And he's yeah. been playing backgammon the whole time. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And so when I, heard, I heard he's a good backgammon teacher. Oh, yeah. okay, okay, that's really cool. Yeah. I wasn't aware of that either. And uh, he's super strong. Yeah. Player. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. People are trying to figure out what his odds should uh -huh. be against Denyak, trying to lay some bets. And I think uh, I think he's getting a good price from the sounds of it. <laughs> yeah. But of course, really tough opponent in Zizi. Who do you who do you favor in this one? Who do you think is going to win? Wow. Uh, okay. Please don't ask me that. <laughs> I cannot answer, yeah. Fair enough, because uh, yeah. I don't want to answer either. I don't know. You know, yeah. I'm just excited to watch a good backgammon. Yeah. But the, Coin flip, right? Yeah. What <laughs> happened in uh, Venice uh, this uh, April? Oh, what yeah. did happen? Uh, so, I don't know. So they had a uh, team world championship. Okay, okay. And uh, we, uh, Japan and Italy, got to the final. Oh, wow, okay. And uh, Italy won. Italy wow. Japan. Okay, okay. And it's because of him, Fernando. Wow, yeah, he's okay. a, he's a, like a joker player. Oh wow, yeah. okay. Um, always he won and yeah. he outplays the opponent. Oh wow, okay, okay. Yeah. Well, that's really cool. I had no idea that they were the current world champions. Mm -hmm. I should know stuff like that. I heard he does a lot of work for the Italian Backgammon Federation too. So really neat. I'm um, always good to see people, you know, spreading the game and, and doing what we can to grow this. So exciting. They're getting the board set up here. Um, you'll notice as we go to Michi, every now and then, if there's ever like an ad on the screen, then uh -huh. we're, then they can't hear us. So we just gotta wait. Okay, okay. <laughs> so if you see uh, that, yeah. Even though I scream, uh, still correct, can... correct. Okay. Yeah. If you scream, all them can hear you, <laughs> <laughs> but they won't hear you on the stream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is Matsu's thirteen. Oh yeah, I was wondering about that. Uh -huh. So it's two points more for the final. Okay, uh -huh. okay. And all then right. the final tomorrow will be twenty-one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. But eleven pointers through here. And I was just updating them, looking through the brackets. It looks like Fernando Bracconi lost his very first match in the tournament mm -hmm. to Lawrence Powell and has clawed his way through the second chance bracket all the way to get here. Hasn't lost since day one. Wow. So, yeah, yeah, pretty good stuff, huh? <laughs> oh, so he, he took a long, long way. Right, right. The longest path possible, I think, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that means a lot of matches. So it's a good news that uh, who uh, lost a uh, player who lost the first round in the main tournament. Still, they have a good uh, chance yeah. to get to the final. Exactly, exactly. You're never dead. You always have some equity. Yep. I mean, it goes for Sander, too. I don't know if you watched that match closely, but I think I think he was down to 2.5% match equity at some point in the really? match last night. Yep. Wow. Rolled double fours from the bar at 908 2 away and eventually won. <laughs> That That's kind of thing amazing. happens in backgammon, yeah. right? Yep. I saw the position on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. Pretty exciting yeah. stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, the color of the board is pretty good. Oh, you like that a lot. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, they're really nice. I like yeah. the inlays on it. And uh, we just got the inlays with the 53rd Backgammon World Championship logo on there, too, mm -hmm. as of, I think, last night. That's so nice. oh. it's looking really sharp. It's the Monte Carlo... Grand Prix board is what it's called. Oh. You can get one yourself in the Galaxy shop if you want. But the winner of the tournament will take this board, this exact board home. So, okay. Yeah. 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 And it's a color of the uh, Monaco flag. Oh, is that what that is? Okay, okay. Yeah. I don't yeah. know what the Monaco yeah, flag red, is. Like. Red and white. 
Oh, cool, cool. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Oh, and it has started. Yep, here we go. Oh, so, so he start. didn't hesitate to choose two men down. No, he's been playing pretty fast the later the rounds go. Like, he's in some sort of rhythm. In a rhythm or just wow. fatigue is making him think less? I don't really know. But he's got, you know, his his most basic instinct is speed gammon, I think. Yeah. <laughs> he's That's just impressive. Play. He plays Isn't double it? ones uh, pretty fast. Yeah. 6-3 looks like it's going to run past. I'm not sure what we can do that's better. Oh. What do you think about his running play? Yeah, I assumed it, we're kind of out of ta time everywhere else. I don't really see a play mm -hmm. B, so I like it. Yeah, making yeah. a three point will be yeah wrong. Yeah, the nine point is kind of close to better, if not better, you know? Yeah, I agree. Nine, yeah. Nine, the nine point is stronger than the yeah. three point. And now generally. Fernando decides to cover the nine and split instead of making the four. A small mistake there. And Zdeniak with an opportunity to point on head, so a small advantage for Zizi here. Mm -hmm. But good structure for Fernando as well, so not likely dead in here. 2-3. Two, three. Two, three. Well, this can hit. Has to give up the midpoint, though. So mm -hmm. he needs this to work soon, or else he's going to be in trouble with no outfield presence. Yeah. So 2-3 is a good dice for white. Yeah, not too bad. We got a 3-4 coming back for black, and I think... The tempo hit feels required because of all the the blots around in the in the broken midpoint here. Before mm -hmm. he can actually improve and maybe make the bar point in a five prime or the next best points anchor all these things, let's just hit and survive one more roll. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, Have our opponent outboarded too, no longer ahead in the race. Looks so like now White me. stopped and start thinking about the cube. Oh no, this is uh, Black's three four to play. Oh. He's entered with a three oh, and has a four now. So how do you, I guess he does have a contender in just covering the nine point, but the, the loose hit looks pretty natural to me. Mm -hmm. The tempo feels very important here. And I expect Zenik, I think he tends to make a tempo hit more often, if anything, like Ooh. when it's not a correct wow. probably. Good play there. Nice. Wow. And a fan. Oh. And does this feel like something to think about? He was going to roll through it pretty quick. And oh, look at that. That was a monster cube and actually wow. almost a pass already. And Zdeniak didn't even think about the cube there. So Very interesting. Why? Why? He, he didn't. Uh, White fanned. Yeah. And then, yeah, black. I, I'm not sure why he didn't think about it. Yeah, usually uh, we should stop and uh, start thinking. Yeah. I think, I mean, it's a lot of matches in a row. I'm sure you've been in this position mm -hmm. on day, whatever this is, six, seven, <laughs> six of the tournament. Where we start to run into decision fatigue and just kind of play what's natural a little bit, think a little less. And now he's going to find oh, it. Okay. And very well might be too good now. Yeah. Yeah. 99 passed. Okay. Yeah. Actually, Zdenik was playing Speed the Gammon uh, <laughs> right before this match. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. So maybe uh, he's affected. Yeah, that could be. <laughs> it's hard to get out of that rhythm after you play something like that. That might not be the best warm up decision for him, but we'll see how it goes from here. Yeah. Oh, do you hear the fireworks in here too? I doubt they're oh. picking up on the yeah on the mics, but yeah, it so sounds Harry, like a war outside. Sorry, stop streaming and watch the fireworks. Oh, that's it. Yeah, we should probably <laughs> pause. Yeah, yeah, just go watch that. They don't need us. <laughs> okay. Ooh, this is a nice shot. Oh, Good options, yeah. but I assume in the in the outfield, yeah. And he Bracconi back. hits back, yep. Bracconi hasn't had a ton of decisions, but he's making all the, the plays pretty naturally. He seems like a strong player from what I can tell so far. You mm -hmm. know? So, yeah. Yeah, so about the four. Yeah, I don't know if I want to step into the attack here. So I guess 13 to 9 looks the, like yeah. the only idea. I believe um, the majority will choose 39. Yeah. Oh, wow. Look how close bar to 20 is, though. Mm -hmm. Just trying to make progress with the race lead and two checkers back. Why don't we want to get a third involved? I can see the logic of it. That's a difficult find for me, though. Wow. Yeah. It's not easy to choose that play. No. All it feels right. very dangerous. And this is why it feels yeah. dangerous. So He's what's going to happen if Black dances? Yeah, that's a good question. Okay. I think it and feels it like... Yeah, it feels like a cube must be coming. I don't know what market loss looks like or if we have already. But my instinct initially 
It's just that with three checkers back, this is still a long game, and we can uh -huh. kind of play and maybe anchor later. Yeah. And, oh, look at this, though. We're yeah. right on and the cusp the, of a take yeah. pass. White yeah. has the nine check card in the zone, which yeah, is Yeah, just longer. enough to be very scary. Yeah. yeah, yeah, okay, okay. So not too surprising to see that it's really close to the borderline there, so... Mm -hmm. um, Hopefully Bracconi finds this cube, and then Zdeniak's going to be presented with no possibility of a mistake, but probably something he's going to have to think hard about, you know? Feels very scary when you're right on the borderline, even uh -huh. though it's, you know, you don't know it's close yeah. when it's over the board, yeah. What would your instinct be in this position? Would you think to take or pass it? Uh, I would take. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my intuition says it's take. Yeah, long game, right? Yeah. It's still, this is a big hint when mm -hmm. they... Nine in the zone is something, but it's still not like decisive. And having to get that third checker around and into the action, only two pip lead, yeah. feels like there's just things that can happen. But we do also, I, it could be a small score adjustment mm. that might decide on the borderline, you know? Maybe so it's. We yeah. have a basic position uh, with double three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in mm -hmm. the response, we roll double three and yeah. we have a similar position. So yeah. The difference is that white has uh, the four point instead of the three point. Yeah. And white has nine check cards in the zone instead yep. of eight. Yeah. And also, of course, uh, white has three back checkers. Yeah. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. interesting. That's the difference. And so that would really lead you to thinking that it's probably a take. When <laughs> 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 feels like, isn't it? Uh, I'm not sure the extra checker and the uh, the four point for the three point feels like it outweighs a whole checker back. But apparently, oh, you know. Okay. So QB sends current. and takes right away. Okay. Oh okay. wow. 5-3, a pretty nice shot. Yep. Stenyak just needs uh, oh, a deuce goodness. before too much comes around here. 6-1 is going to bring a checker into the zone, I assume. I wasn't thinking about splitting out to the bar. I want to continue the blitz somehow. And then, but they're all run pretty close. Yeah. So once uh, Black made the anchor on the two-point, yeah, he, he's okay. Yeah, Otherwise, so I really don't want to let that happen. Yeah, yeah. So rolling two or not is a huge. Double ones, okay. Double one? Even better than... Oh ooh. my goodness. How do we play it? Okay. He's just instantly going to hit and make the five points. Still playing ah. speed gammon. We did have a little bit to think about the anchor, ooh. but now that we're primed, we should stay split, I guess. I like this play. And white danced. <laughs> it's, he really is playing like he thinks he has super speed on the clock. <laughs> like he's just reaching and like shuffling checkers immediately and trying to get around before he... Anything bad happens. Anchoring at the edge seems pretty intuitive here, but look how close that. Okay, never mind. Six uh -huh. three, not so so close. Yeah, making the advanced anchor is a huge uh, improvement for White. Yeah, and now Zdenyak under a lot of pressure again. I think he needs to make that blocking point in the ten. Oh no! But this is similar to the position we looked at together when we're losing the priming battle. Mm -hmm. We should go to, for the attack to to buy time to escape instead, right? And not try to play a priming game with our opponent. Very interesting there. Four enters and two looks like it's going to play safe. Needs a six or a five out. That's a huge improvement. There we go. Gets to the outfield. Oh. And Bracconi's still with a lot of threats of just hitting loose here. I think he's going to have to break the eight to do it. What do you think? Do you run from the back instead? Oh, uh, wow. Ooh. That's why I was not sure. That one's tough. I assumed he needed to con continue the attack with the better board and just couldn't afford to leave all this freedom. Oh. Um, but now as Denyeka escapes to an even game... Oh, double six is going to fix oh that pretty goodness. well, though. It's a game changer. Yeah. And I feel like Bracconi is responding a little bit to Zdeniak's uh, speed game by playing pretty quick himself. Yeah. Sometimes we do that, right? However our opponent plays, we kind of pick that energy up and, and do the same thing. Yeah. But I, I feel very strange. Oh, yeah. He plays so fast. <laughs> yeah. It really doesn't need to. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully he'll notice before the match is over that like maybe I need to slow down about some of these more complicated decisions. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe he used to, used to play quickly online, so it, it, is it a comfortable speed for him? Yeah, I, d I do think that he plays very well in speed game. Uh -huh. I think he can probably play a little bit better if he stops to think, but... It's not like his speed game is bad. It's probably much better relatively than most people's speed game is. Oh, okay. So. Uh, Zdeniak does very well at that online too. I remember him playing multiple seven point speed matches against Ryan Rebello at the same time on Galaxy. What? He likes the multi table speed game, so he, he can do it, you know. That's crazy, <laughs> very That's good. Instinct. Crazy. <laughs> yeah, That's yeah. what I cannot do. <laughs>
Oh, oh six four has the option to break a little bit of contact and buy time, but his opponent's so close to having to vacate the fifteen that he chooses to keep the the potential for a double shot instead. That would yeah. have been a tricky one for me. No, black might have a problem. Yeah, exactly. So now I think he has to let it go. Yeah. Oh, five four. Okay. Five four is a good number for black. Very good, and still holds the six away contact. I'm not sure. Looks like with a large racing lead that White's still a sizable favorite in this, but also very likely to get a game-winning shot. So mm -hmm. he's done well with this take for sure. So? Would have assumed that 4-2 should slot, but I guess tactically, if you might get the shot next roll, you don't want the blotting board quite yet. Okay, 2 in works fine. 6-5 forced to leave. All right, so this is a critical roll. Yep, game decider. Oh, he did that. Cleans up to make sure he doesn't give the game back with any shots. Two in, probably not enough to play, but he does still have a racing lead. What do you think? Uh -huh. Here it comes. Instant. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And with the broken board, I think ZZ's right that so many numbers are just going to hit loose and win the game that way. Yeah. That he's not going to get to see his race, you know? Oh. Um, but this is a tough one to figure out. When you have 18 pips mm -hmm. and only behind four points of structure, it feels a little bit like, well, maybe I can race, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the black, black has some bad numbers. Okay. Mm. The Backgammon Galaxy mobile app. Star membership. High analysis. Blunder database, private games, coin games, rating games, and much, much more. Uh oh. All right, another Galaxy app commercial for you. Download that on the iStore, but but yeah, Michi, you were saying he had some bad numbers in the end there. Six five, I saw that couldn't hit things like that. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting one. Okay, so ten away, thirteen away. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. What is this doing? Six, uh, six two. Yeah, and just running is kind of the weakest mm. of them. With the that's a hard one to pick, though, isn't it? It doesn't. Thirteen five was actually a strong candidate uh, there too. I guess yeah. there's some four duplication, but okay. I wouldn't have known what to do with that one, but gets hit. And does he fan as well? Oh wow! Oh, uh. and this is a killer. Yeah, I think we're going to want to prime that. I mean, we could just link up the blots and still have structure here. Okay, 11 to 9 does look pretty strong. 8 to 7 is the instinct for the, how it interacts mm -hmm. with the blot on the 24. Um, but both must be, even at the score, very close to the cube. So maybe he's thinking about buttoning up to make sure he gets there and doesn't leave any fly shots, you uh -huh. know? Why do we need to leave the 3, 5, 3, 6, 2, 6? Yeah, 6 Oop. shots. Oh! But XG preferred what? it, gets punished for it anyway. Yeah, yeah. And stops to think a moment about whether or not he still has a cube, maybe, but it seems like he needs to do a little work now with three checkers back. The steel white half to roll well. And the 23, wow, my instinct would have been to maybe make the anchor, but it's only nine in the zone, nine and a half. Priming is the bigger threat here. Zenyak would not prefer, with three checkers back and so little in the zone and such a pure structure, to have to turn it into attack, uh -huh. so he can afford to just step up to the 22. Actually, actually for me, it's not close. Yeah, I, de yeah. I definitely go to a 22 point. Yeah, I didn't see it at first, the mm -hmm. theme of the position, but it makes sense once I give it some time, yeah. So we're going to cover the back and then do something with our back checkers, it looks like. Hmm. Very nice improvement for Zdenyak again, and this feels pretty strong now. Going to find the cube, even at the leading score. Yeah. And uh, I th how about the race? Uh, it looks like Zdenyek's only ahead two pips, but okay. either way, I think he's got everything in this position. Mm -hmm. He's got the better board, the better structure, the anchor against an unanchored checker is 10 in the zone. It's just going to be too much. Um, yeah. So even at the score, I don't think Broconi can talk himself into taking it. And Zdenyek just steamrolling this match so far. <laughs> yeah. In lightning fast speed, too. We're going to be out of here in like 30 minutes. Go watch the next round of fireworks. You ready? <laughs> <All right. laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, but I, th I think it's a, it's a tough decision. Yeah, you would be tempted to take this, huh? This yeah. looks uh, 
fairly disastrous. What what uh, the upside, I guess, is three checkers coming around or the close race? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Having three back check. Oh, okay. He took it. He does take it. Okay. Not too big and probably like a score adjustment kind of thing. But it looks really hard to see how how on earth White's gonna win. What's mm -hmm. your, what's your plan? Yeah, first he has to make the anchor. Yeah. yeah the three point anchor or yeah. butterfly anchor. Yeah, yeah. The one that he wants to leave, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, that's the first and the important step. Okay. Oh and he and does he, it. Yeah. And don't want another checker behind the structure, but even here, this feels like this could be, if this is takeable, I don't feel like it's by a lot, even uh -huh. after we've anchored behind the five prime, you know? So, I don't know. Gary. And look at this. Instead of coming in, he should just go for mobility here. And just leave the 20 entirely. Must be some bad numbers, like fours specifically, that he's saving by running to the 15. What do you think? Do you think this is tactics, or how do you find the running play, 20 to 15 here? Ah, uh, no, ah, uh, no, I don't think I can do that. No? Uh, He's looking at it, though. This is yeah, good instinct yeah, yeah, yeah. and finally slowing down to uh, find the best play, even okay. though they're marginal. So because of the three point uh, having a semi dead checker, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's okay. why feels less risky if you yeah, beat it. White, white position is uh, pretty weak. Yeah. And that's why that, that checker is not doing him any favors, so he should use it now to make the deuce point, even though it's not a very pure point. Mutual holding games, we like to in increase our board strength pretty quickly as well for the inevitable contact if we're going to win this way game. Oh. And dice number is... 6-3. Six, 6-3. Three. Six, three. Okay. Can you see the on the board on the right any better? It's on the board, too. I don't know. You can pull the monitor a little closer, uh, too. Okay, my eyesight is not great. <laughs> oh, nice. How's that? Yeah, now it's easier. Oh. This is a really interesting play, too, here. Yeah, may I maybe think more, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, like, sort of the natural speed gammon play feels like it's just uh, coming around the bend 15 to 6, but we're pretty disconnected after that play. Mm -hmm. Might have trouble running later, and it turns out that the just making the link in the outfield and getting that, like, some sort of midpoint back is a little stronger here. Still not too afraid of the blitz with yeah. the Empire board and everything. Okay. This is so, a tricky one for me to find. Yeah, I think it's a typical technique that when we have three back checkers yeah. and we... we uh, Tango uh, connected each other uh, to uh, yeah. go forward. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. Spending some time on this play. Yeah, L like, a, like a three body problems. It, what? It's, it's a physics, uh, a famous ah, physics. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. I guess the, the challenging thing about a play like this is just that you feel like you open up a game plan in attack, right? Uh -huh. But it's not too strong of a game plan here with only... Yeah. And, and so he does end up making the safe play, mm -hmm. safe in quotes, with yeah. only nine checkers in the zone, misses an opportunity. Yeah. So generally, when we have a, a five prime, mm -hmm. it's a nice accomplishment. Yes. Uh, after that, uh, we can focus on running back checkers. Ah, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. I think I remember you covering that in your book, which is oh. really nice, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look at this, but not anymore, huh? This time we should stay and just clean up our blots and enforce oh, our opponent now. to come to us. Okay, now, now leaving scary. the anchor is super dangerous. Yeah, and so more dangerous than breaking one of your priming points. Yeah, so Black cannot leave the anchor here. Mm. It's impossible. Missed his one opportunity. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> No, Thanks White is happy get. to take the cube. Yeah, the game worked out pretty well for him. You're right. How'd you know? <laughs> <laughs> it is a take, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so.
So what is the alternative? Uh, leaving the eight point, make it, or maybe make make the two point. Mm, against a four point board, I really don't like just volunteering a shot. I don't think, even yeah. though we get a four point board of our own. So I feel like the alternative would be like a double falcon or some variant of coming out. Uh, He's gonna look if he can keep the five prime. Oh, uh, and this is big. He yeah, couldn't do it before. Scary. Oh. Right. And so I think, even though it is much more dangerous, I think we start to look for the play here because we're out of timing and have to destroy something else. Mm -hmm. And that's what's leading to him towards maybe trying that out. Yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah. So in terms of timing, white timing is not great. That's true. Yeah. About to break something and come to him most likely. Oh. Oh, or just win the race. Level five? Wow. Yeah. Not Another win the race, but a small favorite in the mm -hmm. race now. Very nice shot for him, sure. Now, White is super happy to holding a cube. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, uh... He's gonna check in on the race to see if he has anything, and I think against the 21 points, still, like, technically down a little before the roll. Not quite, but he must be a sizable favorite. Mm -hmm. Um, potentially with the recube, we need to start thinking mm -hmm. about it here. Um, these are really tough adjustments, I think. You know, recubes and holding games and something like this. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Usually we we have pretty simple references that maybe I'm not used to thinking about the winning chances in exactly. I just kind of have a sense for money when the cube comes. Yeah, yeah can you guess the cash point of a white at this score? No, I don't know that off the top of my head at all. Uh, I um yeah, me neither, but uh, just like a seventy six percent is my guess. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was gonna say mm -hmm. the the number I tend to use for recubes for a lot of scores is right around 25, and the further out we get, then it gets a little lower, but mm -hmm. it, it's going to be more than the usual 21, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Oh! Ooh, oh, my there we goodness. go, right back in it. Yeah. Maybe the three-point lead is enough to be, like, 75, though. Who knows? Yeah. Okay. Now, black is a favorite. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But white got plenty of game out of it. I can respect the tape. <laughs> oh, small transcriber pause. Six four, six five. Six four. Nine three eight four. Oh, what happened? Uh just transcriber catching oh, up, figuring okay. out the play, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. When they play speed gammon, especially in the bear off, it's so hard to keep up. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, people play so quickly in bearing off. Yeah. If there was a transcription world championships, though, I would I would join it. I would do it. I think I'd do well. Oh, I wow! I do. Yeah. Are you so good? I th I think I'm pretty okay. I think I might be an odds favorite in that field. Let's great, see. great. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I think I have. I'm okay, but uh, yeah. not not uh, far from the best. Okay. Okay. I tend to run, uh, I transcribe from VLC with my videos, and I run it at four times speed. <laughs> what? Yeah. How is that possible? Oh you just my have to goodness. pause the video every oh now and then. Oh my goodness, yeah. But most of it, it skates through, and so I... Wow. Probably about the half the length of the match uh, is how long it takes me to transcribe a match, I'd Okay. Say. Yeah. So you must be the top candidate of the contest. I might be, I might be. <laughs> so White Road Double Three and... Uh, yeah, has has a nice position. But yeah, it's still, kind of oh no, double three. Okay, solves everything for Zdeniak. Yeah, and who knows? Maybe is he gonna let him have a point? I hope so. At some point, <laughs> he should get at least one point, right? All right, why the half zero big doubles? But the, actually, one big double is not enough. <laughs> Justin Knoll transcribes at half speed, he says. <laughs> <laughs> he can't think as fast while transcribing as he did over the board. That makes sense, yeah. <laughs> oh, someone in the chat asked what, uh, yeah, EPC, effective pip count, like everyone answered. So it's, uh, what that means is the, oh, we might have an ad here. I'll pause mm -hmm. and share later. Unless Tara's not in there, I don't know. It looks like we're safe. Effective pip count is like a measure of how many pips or numbers on the dice we expect to have to use to get home. 
Um, so if you have all your checkers stacked up on the on the ace, you might get them off in a certain number of rolls, but probably you're going to roll on average eight every time. And so every two checkers is probably going to be like eight effective pips, something like this. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's a, it's a technical measure to figure out, give you a way of estimating what the race is actually like in, in not nice positions, in, in wasting positions, positions yeah. where things are stacked up deep. It's very tactical. Yes, very tactical. I like that. 5-4 was an interesting play, also yeah. very tactical, stacking up the 6. So, 3-2 for black. Yeah, our opponents insisted on playing down... So, the, uh, I don't see any reason to split back checkers. I agree. Yeah, so two men down should be this better. Is, uh, yeah, after the down play in the open, and it's actually closer than I would think. Um, but yeah, I guess while we have the better board, still tends to be a nice time to split, mm -hmm. but... Uh, after the downplay is kind of a good rule of thumb for that. Ooh, and hits too. Oh. What a shot for ZZ. He definitely has all the dice so far. Four, three in with two. And what is this? With the big match lead, we're just going to roll through it, I think. But uh, definitely leading here. Oh. Oh. So he tried to do a double tiger. Oh, you want with, him to? With, you with think with so? Five, four, five, four. <laughs> yeah. Because okay. he. He, yeah, he touched the two checkers on the 8th point. Ah, five. okay, okay. It is an interesting play here. Yeah. Uh, parked and threatening an anchor. Maybe a bit of an overplay when we're half escaped and we can just get to a simple game with the match lead. Um, could be closer for money or maybe even the right play there. I think there is some score influence here already. And it looks like he just wants to make this play so bad. <laughs> hmm. uh, the fancy ones are fun, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> Would you go for it here? You think uh, it's a double tiger position? No. no? Okay, I, okay. I, I, I want to keep the eight point. Yeah, it's mm. too valuable. Mm. It looks so nice to play against four checkers back from year one because we can come around the bend and link up like this. It's either going to be that or uh, play in. My first instinct was to link up with the ten and find a four. Oh. But uh, it goes for it. And it's very close. So uh, tough to fault him for that play. Definitely we can see the upside of it on mm -hmm. fans or misses. Uh, one, two, and he's going to get the four point out of it, though. So he's uh, made an improvement. Probably happy with his play. And we're not allowed to have three checkers on the 21 four point. As far <laughs> yeah. as I understand. So he's yeah, I learned here. from you. Okay, okay. <laughs> Against the rules. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It's illegal. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this looks like, yeah, going to link up. Making the nine looks, that's the first thing I saw. Yeah. Looks like such a strong point, but just nicer to get a checker to safety. Yeah, I couldn't see the alternative. Oh, making the nine point is really, it just interacts with that blot on the 22 oh, oh. so nicely, you know? Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. oh I overlooked. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was really yeah, Actually, close. nine point is much stronger. They were almost tied, and I think a little better to safety the blot. Okay. But yeah, nine point stronger than the 10 point. Yes. 6-3 for Zdenyak. It seems like it's time to solve something about our back checkers. Which is he had the nine point now. <laughs> hmm. But uh, goes for the oh. loose hit. Okay. Is this correct? It was, yeah. And with uh, the checkers back advantage, the tempo might slow Raconi down from covering the blot that he yeah. left in the board. So that's Actually, probably part of it. This situation is a downside of the a previous white play. Ah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. And now, Raconi with the tempo. This looks like a hit and cover, most likely. What else do we have? Oh, it's a different, a different hit and cover. Yeah. I was thinking we covered from the eight and yeah. hit with the seven on the I four. I totally agree. Yeah. Yeah, but look at this. XG's preferred play is to cover from the six, keep the eight point, and hit on the deuce. That's kind of a nice find. Wow. It feels wow. like the wrong point, but it it keeps a point of our own. Uh -huh. Okay. A difficult one to see wow yeah uh i'm not sure i could find this play over the board or not yeah it's tricky i think i'd miss it i think i'd just look yeah. at this so quickly and even forget that there's another hitting option yeah okay so this play has lots of downside oh oh the chat's doing a really good job of defining all of your book terms right now the double tiger and the double falcon for people who haven't heard it <laughs> you can talk through those if you want Someone asking what the double tiger was, and then if that's what the double tiger is, well, then what's the double falcon? <laughs> <So> <laughs> I love those, though. People love them in general. Just uh, they're nice ways to remember these concepts. You know, it's really cool mm -hmm. that you can come up with those names like that. I don't have that in me, so I, I'm impressed with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. People already have lots of concepts uh, in their brain, but uh, 
if we put the name on it, now it's much it become much much clearer. Yeah, I totally agree. And then we just see that everywhere, right? Oh, this is a double falcon. Maybe it's the time for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I like that a lot. So, I'm certain the double tiger falcon or er, concept has not led to fancy play syndrome like Zdenia Cat there or anything like that, right? <laughs> Maybe a little bit. <laughs> 13, oh, this is neat. It's better to just clean up the blot. We're not so worried uh, about being attacked. Actually, back. here, yeah. uh, there's no threat uh, yeah. by black. So, right. it's not urgent to make the three point anchor, butterfly yeah. anchor. Almost better to be diversified with sixes and fours, both to come out to the mm -hmm. uh, the bar point and focus on that. But uh, close, always long term, it might come in handy, so can't be too bad. What this doesn't get our sixteen point blot to safety anywhere, does it? So the best we can do is just bury to the four. Pretty awkward roll. Five four didn't jump out at me as something that should be bad, but nothing. That's the best it could do, other than creating another blot, <laughs> leaving double yeah. shots everywhere. This 4 3 is. Uh, but we don't see good alternatives. Yeah, 4 gets the cover, and now that he's made the 2, he's just going to think about breaking the 8. But this still leaves a direct with very little upside. Yeah. So I guess that's kind of the argument for just slotting the 7, even though you don't mm -hmm. have a lot of covers. It's, it's hard for it to work so well for you, but there's just not really anything else. At least it plays a yeah. little bit nicer. Yeah, well, it has to leave a direct shot. Yes, yes. I guess an argument you could make is that maybe Black is happier with the direct shot that er, ex exits from the 24. Mm -hmm. So maybe you don't want to give him that opportunity to hit with tempo and escape, you know? It's a tricky one to find, I think. Yeah. And they, they run pretty close. Yeah. And this play gives an extra shot. Any aces, 6-3, 3-4, mm. uh, so 15 shots. Yeah, good point, good point. Yeah, the display only 12 shots. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Reduces shots, too. That's a nice find. And I expect mm. that's what he's going for. Would that be enough to decide it for you in this position? Just reduce shots? Yeah? Yeah. yeah. The tactics are good, okay. Okay. And he does find this play, yeah, too. Yeah, he did that. feel like I agree with you so far. He's been a pretty strong player. You know, finding... Generally finding the best play. I can't think of any mm. big mistakes he's made at all. Yeah, I don't see much else but this uh, 13 to 10 and 16 to 14. I guess he's going to consider parking a blot in front of the anchor, but the four-point board's a little too much. We really don't want to get hit here. And uh, yeah, my question is when or white is doubling? Oh, interesting from yeah. the center here. I can't tell how big of a a favorite white is here, but I guess there's a lot of it's volatility in oh, the position. He wrote one. Ooh, wow. yeah, and a four out. Wow. That's a beautiful so shot. So he made two improvements. Mm hmm And so maybe right now is the answer. Is this yeah. loose hit enough? So it feels like probably a okay. take for Zdenyak. He did that. He found it. Okay, okay. Yeah. And a nice money cube, too. Not too much mm -hmm. change at the score. But this is a tricky one for me to find. I guess the swing on the hit feels pretty strong. And for Zdenyek, well, he can just be missed and has good structure, but he's timing feels a little suspect to escape that 24 point, right? How are we going to do that in this position? It's a very strange one to evaluate for me. What, uh, what did you lean towards here? You thought clear cube? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, I don't think Zdenik would drop this cube. Yeah, I don't think so either. Yeah, but uh, once he started thinking and uh, yeah, took uh, a lot of time, then mm -hmm. he might drop. Mm -hmm. It feels like a passable position, and he's not too far off if he chooses to do that. Mm -hmm. But it's um. Not being at the edge of the prime feels very difficult. I guess the, the thing that makes it takeable is that the gap's like right in the center of the prime, right? So you can hop off to the edge with a little bit of safety. And we do have the perfect three-point board. Uh -huh. Lots of chances of improving to four. And he's going to take it. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay, he took it. 
I expect him to tend towards taking in general, too. I think Zdeniak likes to play it out. 1-4, One, not the four. best shot. Nope. But it's much better than dancing. Yes, yes, for sure. 6-5, what does this do? Oh, 6-5. It's That's pretty a real bad. Win. Yeah. Now, Black had a great chance. Maybe that was... 2-3? Oh, hits two oh. checkers. Beautiful shot. Yeah, it all blocks. Oh. So maybe a significant part of the market loss on white side was actually not... A double ace? Yeah, what That's a shot. That's insane. <laughs> so many jokers what back is and that? forth. Oh. It's crazy, backgammon. <laughs> What is 11 to 6 feels pretty strong for trying to keep our opponent dancing and not anchoring. As soon as they anchor, we're in a pretty lost priming game. And need a 3 very quickly. Um, feels like it keeps the most pressure on the blocks to keep them dancing and everything, but... Okay, they run fairly close. Mm -hmm. I guess he doesn't want 3s from the midpoint in anyway because they're stepping up. Okay, Ace. Ace no. in for Braconi is pretty nice. Yeah, Black definitely needs to roll a 3. And oh, he did that. nice. And could have been hitting with it too if he stayed on the midpoint. But uh, what does it do now? Just run? I don't see a better six. Uh, but it would be yeah. nice to keep fours to hit back here too yeah. and maybe make the anchor. So, yeah. Tricky. But I think just run. I think just run. And they're pretty close. 11 to 5 in. Mm -hmm. Once again, he's probably going to be trapped into thinking about this for a while because both options have merit, right? <laughs> Saying there to... Uh, the pressure the blot and maybe make the anchor is uh -huh. a strong idea. And just getting mobility and threatening the blots in the outfield, having something to do with fives, also very nice. So, going to look at them both, figure he needs to flip a coin, choose one, and he can't be wrong, really, right? <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> funny how backgammon works oh. sometimes that way. Okay. Uh, makes the run play the right. slightly better one. Nice. Oh, he bounced Fan for Bracconi. It was looking like Bracconi might... Finally win some points on the board, but now it's looking pretty rough. Wow, three check cards on more. the board. That's brutal. To win, that's... Uh, getting feet down is pretty strong for Bracconi. If he can keep entering, he's going to keep Zdenyek busy for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And gets a new cover than the three. The threes he really wants to use to escape. I think you would use a three to step up instead of cover, but I'm not sure. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah? Oh, six four? Six four, nothing to okay. do but hit on the ace, okay. And then serious risk of cracking now. And oh. gets hit, so entering on the four yeah. fixes a lot of problems. Two is pretty good. And he does, okay, okay. Oh. We can get off the threes to cover with a four to two. Or yeah, four to three. I like this play. Keeps hmm. diversified as well is probably the bigger factor. Four hits, okay, another huge yeah. shot for Zdenyuk. Of course. Look at this, it's an option to just come out and cover. Oh, oh. okay, okay, not oh. so important to get the blot right now, yeah. Oh, okay. that's nice. Uh, yeah, oh. good find. Okay. 23 is huge. Yeah, yes. Now... Who's the favorite after he makes the 23? Good Looks question. like Bracconi. Very okay. good yeah, Bracconi is already winning, yeah. A lot of work for Zdenyuk to do. But just, just one... Three changes everything. Yes, yes, absolutely. Bracconi still can't come in. This dice roll is crucial. 6-2, okay, at least he put a 6 on it so he doesn't have to crack. Mm -hmm. One of his best non-3s. Bracconi go. not in too much of a hurry to come in. He could get stuck behind the prime, uh, potentially. 4-1, okay. one, one is Denyek's worst. Oh, finally. Now he cracked, mm. and now he's nearly dead. Really hard to recover this position without a lot of luck. But okay. Perconi dances one more time. Oh, what? three up Double and clean three? up. This is huge. Okay, new oh favorite. Oh my goodness. New oh favorite. Oh my goodness. He was and, saving him up. And the white kept dancing. Wow. That's insane. Oh, two in for Bracconi. This is oh, a huge roll, too. Two. Wow. Lots of pressure on this next sequence yes. now. Needs a four now to help himself get around and gets it. Okay. What a shot. Okay, Easy. I think we stay out Easy. of direct Easy. range, right, and continue to the 14. That would be my idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Always a question here, though, whether, whether we want the opportunity to be able to uh, pick and pass with a six 
or whether we want to avoid being hit ourselves when our opponent rolls some sort of 2666 from the bar. 2-2, two, two, right? So not completely clear. What would you, is that what principle you'd use is stay out of direct range, or which would you go for? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. This any three. <laughs> Actually, here. So if he puts a bullet on the 12 point, white get uh, two, six, double six, double two, four shots. Yeah. Uh, and here, probably none? No, sixes still gets there. Mm hmm. Oh. I think the thing you worry about the most is when he makes the 6 here, though, and now you're almost wanting to make the 12 to button up, and not a point you want to make. So I think he... Oh, he's going to make it anyway with this roll. Okay. Uh, really strong contact for yeah. Bracconi. Oh, White is attacking with a 3. Yeah. yeah. And super close game. Maybe Bracconi favorite again. Huge swings in this. Wow. What's going to happen if Black dances? Oh, my goodness. Oh, 1-6 just hops out. Oh. Amazing. Uh, what do you mean if Black dances? He's not going to dance. <laughs> That's not what he's doing in this game. <laughs> Did he spend all his threes or does he have one left? Oh. Ooh, this is quite a few shots from the bar against uh, a five point board, but we have to go for it, I think. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. This seems to duplicate twos and sixes yeah. to step up to the eight very nicely. So yep. double six, double two, six two, only four shots? Wow. Is that really all it is? Wow. That's impressive. But all of those are pretty strong. Going to hit at least two checkers. Or a lot of the doubles are. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and this is a nice uh, point. A little bit easier to clear than the 12 would have been. Three landing spots. Still hoping that his opponent stays in the air. Here, 6-2 is the anti-joker for white. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. It cracks the board. That's Well, it could enter deep and come off the front side. Maybe it'd be okay. Is that <laughs> what you do? 23 and 13, I think. You roll a 2-6? Yeah. Probably instead of breaking the board. But look at this. He's going to pause to think about the cube. How much of yeah. a favorite am I? I'm going to win some gammons when I get away from this. Okay. And it might be his last chance. Um, the question is whether or not Bracconi has enough contact after he safeties the back blot, I guess, right? Mm -hmm. And the contact looks pretty decent for the huge score lead. Hard to send a four cube at eight away. Five, four, oh. going to clear the point. That's a beautiful shot. Yeah. And now, what has to come in? Oh, and now is. that he doesn't, what do we have? It's, I usually just simplify by not even thinking about cubes mm -hmm. at this score because they're so hard to figure out what the balance yeah. of gammons and wins are. So now it's like, like a pass. So is it too good? Uh, it's not quite a pass. Oh, pass. really? Not even a double. Yeah. And I, I think what that means is that once we get here is that it will be too good. And that's just tends to be what happens at these scores, right? Mm -hmm. Is that you're never in your window. You're either not good enough or too good right away. Um, and I think this is going to be another instance. But I have seen a tendency from Zenyak, look at this, a very close too good decision to cash these games anyway, which is an okay simplification for very little equity, I think. Um, so I actually kind of expected him to try to cash it there, but he's playing on correctly. <laughs> Must clear from the back. Oh, this is extra safe here, maybe. But taking a checker off against the deuce point anchor, we prefer to peel, right? Oh, yeah. Do you have this position in your endgame technique book? <laughs> I hope so. Oh, it feels strange. So for us, uh, if I were black, yeah. first I take one check off from yeah. the three point. Yeah. And then I start thinking about two. Yeah. Yeah, that's my thought process. But Zdeniak starts, but I thought you had a principle in your book that says two's clear against the 23, right? <laughs> so maybe he's right. Maybe he's oh. just listening to your book too closely. Okay, huh? okay. <laughs> Have you changed your mind since writing that book? Learned some new things? Oh, maybe. <laughs> maybe? Okay, okay. <laughs> I remember your book well. <laughs> <laughs> so what is Black's gamma winning chance? Let's see. It's Hi. Hi. I would think he's the favorite to win uh, a gammon. Yeah. How about the 50? Yeah, yeah, 55 we see, okay. Uh, that one didn't really help the effort too much. You should actually peel a checker there. Interesting, because how close the gammons were. You saw the analysis. I, I don't find that play. Clearing from the rear seems very intuitive. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah. Yeah, Fernando has tough time. Trying to spend his pips efficiently, finds one that goes directly to the six and takes it. Oh, Ooh, nah, first shot. Oh. He got a shot. 
Gonna visualize the two and not uh, quite. Two crossovers is something, though. And he's gonna come off the anchor instead. Oh, Interesting. Really? I would just, yeah, I'm not what, sure. Why that? I don't know. We I don't see, see the reason. Me neither. Oh, seems pretty strange. Yeah. Yeah, we prefer to wait until we're we're not giving like that extra yeah. two one. Yeah, another, double two yeah. is anti joker. Oh, he oh, had six oh, on the point. Oh, so six, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. So yeah. there's no yeah. anti joker. Nope. And so he's prioritizing saving a backgammon, it would seem. Oh, not fuck. expecting to get good enough contact. And otherwise hoping to just run off the gammon. Yeah. yeah. But to at this point, why white uh, run out? Yeah, I wouldn't have thought that's wasn't my instinct to do that either, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Two off four one plus. Actually one, white would get a shot. Yeah, yeah, you're right. 3-1, these always trick me. I never know what the best distribution to get checkers in is here when I'm shuffling around two in the outfield like this. 6-5, two off, and... White needs to roll a big dice. Oh, oh that's pretty big. That's going to get a checker okay. in. A lot of numbers going to save the gammon here. If he gets the shot okay. and he does... Now white is a favorite to save small gammon. favorite. And he does it. Oh. Okay, just barely. Yeah. Exciting finish to that game. Yeah, another ad for the app. Uh, don't forget to go get the Galaxy app from the Apple Store if you get the chance. Um, it looks like the players may be taking a short play break. Wouldn't be too surprised. They've been bad at it for a while here. And so far, just completely one-sided ordeal as far as the dice are concerned. Both playing pretty sharp. Just one deep take by Bracconi. I don't think he was... Uh, Punished too hard for that. Didn't lose a gammon on it or anything like that. I don't think. I can't remember for sure. But uh, understandable to, to adjust that way. And yeah, he's going to need to uh, get into it with the dice for sure. Playing fine, but this is how it goes sometimes. And see Mate walking out. Yeah, they're going to take a short break. Um, so you can check in on the second stream to see how that match is going. We might show some ads real quick, and we'll be back with the next portion of this match shortly. Stay with us. Like the video. If you're enjoying the content, please do. It helps our channel a ton. We'll be back real soon. The Backgammon Galaxy mobile app. Star membership, high analysis, blunder database, private games, coin games, rating games, and much, much more. Improve your backgammon skills by reading the best books on the market. Available on Amazon. Links in the description below.
Yeah. Looks like we're back where we want to be. <laughs> What's happening? I'm just reading through the chat. They're funny. They can probably hear us too. <laughs> Can I play back in with my phone now? Because I downloaded the app. No. Oh, I know it's bad right now. It's good in my room. I do. Mm. Mm. All right, I'm back to chat with the chat while uh, everyone comes back. Player is still on break. Oh, Michi's going to get a nice little recording of us. Cool. Okay. What's this for? Uh-huh. What's this for? Hi, hi, Michi's phone. It's for my YouTube channel. For his YouTube channel. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. We're on YouTube right now, too. This is like YouTube Inception. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for helping me with uh, the commentary. Much appreciated. Oh. <laughs> Everybody loves your commentary. Oh, yeah. I appreciate that so much. <laughs> Yeah, it's just for Apple right now, coming for Android soon. What other questions do we got? Any else bounce back and forth between looking for rating and coin games? Uh, I'm not sure. Oh, players coming back to the table maybe to set up, but uh, I'm not sure. I think as more players get on there, it'll be easier. Yeah, once we have the Android app, more players on there. What is my book going to cover? Oh, I wrote a simple thing on just match play adjustment. <laughs> Um, the goal is to, uh, ideally as li like with as little reference to take points as possible. I just think it's like sort of difficult to memorize match equity and take points and all these things and start from that idea. Um, so I start from just some scores and some logic instead and kind of how it acts near your match end and how that changes things. I go through some checker play stuff too. Um, I wouldn't say it's like the depth of the understanding of match play that these players have or anything like that, but it's a nice like foundation for how to organize your thinking about match play, especially for people that are approaching it for the first time from money games. Am I good, Nick? <laughs> Michi, you have to answer. I can't answer if I'm good or not. What? How, how good am I? Am I like a fish? Am I okay? Grandmaster? What it, I'm not a grandmaster. I don't know. Oh, come yeah, on, I'm Nick. okay. <laughs> come on, Nick. <laughs> I aspired yeah. to get the BMAP oh, yeah. grandmaster rating. I don't think I'm studying hard enough right now to do that, but I play pretty well. Yeah. You are a fantastic we player. Got Mate here, too. Thank you. Thank you. This is the man that records all the matches and posts all the videos on YouTube. He, uh, he might be the tallest. <laughs> Gigi was just asking. Yeah. Yeah. Do you win? He's the only person in backgammon that literally lifts me up. Yeah. It's <laughs> Denek's brother. Pretty tall? Yeah, he's, he's pretty tall. Yeah. Denek has a brother? I didn't know that. Yeah, he has a younger brother. Yeah, younger brother. Martin. Oh. And he's, and he's like... Martin Ziska. Okay. But what's his PR? <laughs> <laughs> is that a question? Martin Ziska. PR is also uh, taller than Denek's. Oh, taller than Zenyx as well. That's a good <laughs> way to put it, Mate. I like okay. it. Okay. <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, board out of focus. No, I don't think so. Maybe that's a buffering thing on your side. I'm not sure. Oh, okay. Who has the most world championships? Uh, Jorgen Grandstead with three, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And Mochi behind with two. Anyone else has two? Uh, Akiko. Akiko has two as well. Okay. Yeah. You can and, watch her on uh, screen too. 
and of course Bill Roberti. Uh, oh, Bill Roberti Ma as well. Mayburg. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. You know the history way better than me. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I learned the history because I want to become the world champion. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Now they have started. Four two. So I hope uh, Fernando has a fresh mind. Oh yeah, we got someone in the chat asking too if uh, uh, being more experienced can work against you sometimes. It does occasionally lead us to find incorrect plays that other players would not consider, mm -hmm. but for the most part, I think it helps. <laughs> so yeah, this uh, hidden split looks like a nice idea, but trailing in the match, I guess he's supposed to go a little more all in on the offense. Fine play though, gets attacked on the back foot, and yeah, splitting and linking up the seven seems more important than anchoring. I like it. Double three is going to make the best point and hit loose, it looks like, yeah. and what else does it want to do? So the question is, the last, how to use the last three? Yeah, okay. and Trees needs to clean up, doesn't see the urgency of stepping up 23 mm -hmm. to 20 yet. I'm not sure though, it looked kind of nice. Doesn't look too worrisome to be attacked on the 20 this roll, but, uh, but one last block. That's nice. Difficult so decision. So this six is also interesting. Yeah. Well, he's against 10 in the zone, against a pretty strong attacking structure, and has the time to not split. So I think, I think just playing down from the mid feels fairly comfortable to me. It also prepares us to attack if our opponent steps up for an anchor, so... Yeah. Our yeah. opponent doesn't really have good sixes either <laughs> if we don't split, you know? So I think there's some yeah. nice tactical features that allow us to avoid avoid that, and I expect, having seen how Bricconi play so far, that he'll find that. And the block has a structure uh, who is not comfortable to make the bar point. Mm, yeah, very good point. Oh, these that he can cover and then also notices, well, wow. I got a pretty nice play on the other side of the board, too. <laughs> and that's a tough one to find. Yeah, okay. Very tough one to choose between. I might think that just covering for the offense is better anyway, and that's wow. what he's going to go for. But he's I supposed was not sure about that. Same, same. 4-2 looks like... Okay, he can... Uh, well, certainly 13-9, to nine, right? What other 4 do we have? And then my initial instinct is to just bring another down and try to focus on priming. Mm -hmm. But he's going to have to go through how many fly shots, and he's thinking about reducing against the four-point board, which is quite reasonable as well. Yeah. And look at this. We should actually just continue to the seven and leave no fly shots. That's not a play that I'm looking for. <laughs> wow, I cannot do that. Yeah. Okay, I'm plus plus two down is fine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I feel quite have to take a risk. Mm -hmm. Because uh, White is already the underdog. Yeah, that's fair too. It's not going to hurt as much to uh, be sent back there. And we can see he does definitely lose quite a few more Gammons. Oh. And, wow. But wins uh, a couple more games and Gammons himself too. Finds the best play here. Zenyak going to consider whether or not he has a cube even at the score. Feels uh, a bit optimistic there to get one through. 3-5. Uh, going to make a bid for freedom. It's the last problem he has with this position, I think. So that makes a lot of sense to me. Before White's board gets better, the prime gets stronger, and he has a harder time doing it. And I think White's going to improve the prime here. Even Ooh. against a four-point board, I think I'm going to let the one, the shot go. What do you think? We do have plays like this, too. Oh, he can hit. I didn't even think about hitting. Oh. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course that's an option, but I really want the four prime. I'm not sure. Yeah. They run very close. Wow. Oh, it's another tough choice. Ooh. <laughs> oh. It makes the five point finds best play. Very, very good. Yeah. As he tends to do. So, Fer uh, Fernando has a very tough choice, uh, two uh, rolls in a row, but uh, he both chose well. Yeah, very it's good very stuff good. from him. This could be tricky, too. I think he's going to. Look at whether he can get away with the priming play and hopping out, but I think it's just way too many shots. Uh -huh. And the most life is to hit our opponent off the edge, stay on our anchor. Yeah. 
Yeah, if he comes out, uh, any sixes, threes, and any fours uh, attacking the one point. Yeah, yeah. Just too many numbers. Mm -hmm. And outboarded, no less. And then... Ooh, perfect shot from Zdeniak. Okay. Oh, three, five. Wow. He can't miss. And what is this going to be on a fan? Are we too good already? Yeah. Just slightly. Mm. Just slightly. Wow. And he does roll on, like the decision. I think the split to the bar is more about making the two point than the bar point necessarily here, but we'll see what he gets. If he gets the opportunity, he will. Interesting, okay. Ooh, double oh. twos is oh, a wow. bit of a lifesaver. Okay. He's the best dice for white. And it gives Zdeniak an interesting pause to think about the cube. Look how close this is. At this uh, score, behind a prime, like it's a, it feels like a pretty gammon-centric kind of cube. Mm -hmm. And only six away, I'd be quite wow, scared to send it, and he he's going to find this, and he's going to give a he tough decision that. to Bracconi here. Bracconi has to make a pretty major match adjustment to take this. Uh -huh. I think it looks like a fairly simple pass for the lack of timing and four checkers back. We're just going to lose too many gammons. But that's a feels like a, a common match score adjustment when trailing is you just ignore the gammons a little bit, the price is lower, mm -hmm. and you count on your recube big if the wins are there. And so we'll see how well he knows his match adjustments and if he can pick this one up. Uh, Wonder potential for sure, though. Yeah. You know? Actually, okay. this cube uh, decision, take pass, is crucial for this match. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's a kind of a bluff cube. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so it's one of those being 35 short uh, that you feel uh -huh. good about sending because you really might get some passes, yeah. right? Especially if you do, then you're going to have gained quite a bit on this one. So, of course, why it is uncomfortable to play one to back game. So, I think uh, why it wants to leave the two point anchor. Yes. And why it wants to make a prime with uh, 13 checkers. Yes. I yeah. think. Uh, yeah, I agree with you there. That's a white game prime, and it's not so bad. Yeah, I mean, it's going to take a lot of work to roll two sixes, two aces, and two mm -hmm. more sixes. <laughs> it's very specific with the amount yeah. of time he has left on the rest of the board. Uh -huh. um, but I think his forward chances are there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if somehow he, he does have a backup game plan of having two anchors for now, you know, maybe he can fall back on that somewhere mm -hmm. else. Probably the backup game plan is just to play a 24-point game or a 23-point game on its own. Mm -hmm. um, but it's possible. But I, I don't know. We got some people in the in the chat thinking this would be very very easy to pick up for their knowledge of the score, but I would struggle with this one too. It feels a little bit scary. Wow. Yeah, would you have estimated his wins all the way up at thirty one and a half percent here? I'm not sure. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> do you do that when you're evaluating a cube? Do you try to guess exactly what the uh, wins and gammons sometimes are? Sometimes yes. Yeah. Sometimes yes. And so I trained by myself a lot. Yeah. To estimate the winning chance and game winning chance. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, before I solved the 10 cube uh, positions every day. Yeah. And each time I estimated uh, the winning chance and game winning chance. Very nice. I found uh, the Cube Action 1000 book like so handy for that. Like all the printouts there, I would just oh. try to go through some number of positions that way too. Oh, And I'm rusty nice. on it. That's how I know... I think that's the biggest like gap in my game right now is I'm not doing that right mm -hmm. now. And that intimate knowledge of the cube action just leaves you so much more comfortable in spots like this, you know? It comes up. But wow, yeah, Fernand yeah, Fernando is thinking for a long time. Mm. Cube Action one thousand is not a club, no. It is a book. Yeah, uh, it's so a nice three, book. Yeah, very nice book. Yeah. I don't, I've never, does the author of that, I forget the name, but does he or she go out to tournaments uh, anymore or anything? Uh, uh, do, do we just Sheena? Yeah, yeah. Are they still playing? Uh, yeah. Oh, oh he does oh, make the take. Took. Good find. Great, good find. great. Yeah. 2 6 is a great shot for Zdeniak. Mm. Hopping yes. out to freedom. And Bracconi can't hit. Oh, now his game's in a lot of trouble, under a lot wow. of pressure here. I think it does make the next point. We don't really mind being hit. 
I I struggle to see coming off the anchor now, but it is a viable choice. Look at that. Uh, and like three plies first choice is just running off to 23. And higher plies see a little more danger in that, but it's going to be a tough win to, get, to gain now. Already lost nearly 10% winning chance as well. Yeah. But it looks like, uh, yeah, making a three-point uh, so natural. It does, but maybe less so when we look at how problematic our timing is with those four checkers mm -hmm. back, right? I don't know. My instinct is to think about it for sure. And look at this. This is a tough timing question. Do we yeah. want to send another checker back or not? Interesting. I, it feels to me, too, like this is hurting his timing to help because it's stuck behind the prime. Um, but it looks like XG might prefer actually just avoiding the hit. I like the play. I might have slotted the back as well, but mm -hmm. maybe that actually allows your opponent to go forward. And yeah, Zdenyak prioritizing safety to make sure he doesn't get trapped behind structure. Because his opponent does not want to play a back game and rather turn to whatever small forward chances he has by hitting with the six. So rolling six is... Imp oh, Ooh. double five? Oh. Maybe his worst. Fours might be a little worse because he yeah. can play them all. But it's close. But still, once white rolls a six. Okay. Fives are dead, so not too bad. Still all checkers active. Zdeniak has his own sixes killed, though, so it's going to be hard to crack him. Yeah, double one is a good dice for black. Mm-hmm. Very nice for distribution. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Ooh, fours cracks further. 3-2 is a nice distribution roll as well. Okay. And fours are dead Still now. White has four-point board. Mm -hmm. Six is nice for Zdenyak to just slow down and allow White to crack further. There goes another point. Now we're getting a little heavy on the three-point now. Uh -huh. Things could get awkward, awkward oh, for Zdenyak. Finally. Great shot for White there, and now Zdenyak really needs to clear the, the back point safely and gets exactly the right numbers yeah. to do that. He is hot. <laughs> <That's a match. laughs> yeah. Rolling well. Playing well, too, but I mean, yeah. And double three was a butt shake for White. Yeah, too many pips. Kills another checker. 5-3 is going to be forced off now. Not a lot to uh, close that point out, though, for Zdenyak. 6-1 clears safely, though. Nice shot. We still have the Phantom back game. Mm-hmm. Phantom back game. Yeah, the Phantom 23, right? Yep. It's going to kind of end like an anger. Oh. Okay, not anymore. Right. Zdenyak finding another perfect shot. 6-1, not so bad. Enters and gets moving. That could save some gammons anyway. How many gammons is Zdenyak winning in this position now? Ooh. So less than 50%, that's for sure. Favorite to saving a gammon actually feels like uh, a not-so-bad outcome for Bergoni in this, <laughs> <laughs> from where we've gone, you know? 4-2 okay, makes now, a point, nice. Black has uh, uh, four bad numbers. Oh, horrible numbers. Double shot oh, numbers, and he's going to keep them or clear. I think with how close the gammon race is, I like this peeling play. Yeah, yeah, we've wow. got to try to win a few more. And our opponent's going to have to leave a lot of the time anyway, which means they might not get to stay for the double shot. 6-3 clears nicely. And that gammon race keeps getting closer. 2-1 Two Two one. One, going to clear again. No closer for Zdenyak. Oh. What other creative play do you think he might find? Yeah, peel and, and volunteer. Seems unlikely. Yeah. <laughs> okay, 3-2. Three, three, two. Two. I guess we waste two bips yeah, to make yeah. the board and just wait. Yeah. It's worse. It starts oh. to get really confusing at these, though, like whether we want to roll numbers to save for gammon saving pips or if we want to stay and save the gammon that way. Still has good chances to save it just with large numbers, though. 6-1. Zdenyuk had one free miss. Still two rolls away or one set. Oh, he's going to play for the set. Feels like he needs to roll the twos or better to win the oh. gammon. Interesting. You think he's right here, or would you just go for peeling him uh, too? Yeah, so why is, why is it a big favorite to finish in two rolls? Yeah, it's an interesting mm. idea. Yeah. 
And we got a vote in chat for 3-2 as well. 5-2, mm -hmm. yeah. Is there anything that doesn't get off next troll? I don't think so. Needs the set. Okay. Doesn't get it. So no bad numbers. Right. And 4-3, two points. And Zdenia kept that four-away score. Exciting score. Yeah, four-away. It's a key score in backgammon. Yeah, yeah. Almost plus six on the luck factor, people are noticing. Yeah, yeah, he's rolling well. And with the leading score, usually we can start to split instead, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Finds uh, that. With nine points lead. Yeah, two yeah. down is not a good option. Yeah, three five going to hit anyway. I'm six. Yeah, what else do we have with the six? I guess it's uh, hmm. it's probably duplicates twos and gets hits on points that are less valuable to white. Though it disconnects the checkers. Those are always weird competing principles. Yep. Nice hits and anchors. Beautiful shot for Zdenyuk. Double two. Twos almost makes the nine. Going to play two down for sure. And then maybe step up for an anchor. So come up to the 21 point. I think so. Our yeah. opponent has an advanced anchor, so we need one too, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So I'm going to make a bid for one right now while we still have the better board as well. It looks natural. Yep. 5-1. Five, 5-1. One. Five, one. Just okay. cleans up for a roll, I and guess. But yeah, Black's I, next roll is tough. Stick. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunate shot for him. Well, this doesn't do too much either. What do we... Do we just hop past the candlesticks? And 13-9 yeah. with it. We really like to play that five because, I, I mean, we're not going to... A four up and letting him unstack on us mm -hmm. is just too much. But this four in front of the anchor is a little tricky to find, but I like the play because we're inviting our opponent when outboarded to just leave their anchor and give up such a big asset in their position. It's uh, really sharp to look at that. Playing behind kind of okay as well. All options here. Interesting. This is a tough play for me. Yeah. Hmm. The strangest looking option is all these 13 to 8, 11 to 7. Mm -hmm. I would not think of breaking the 11 to volunteer in front. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, would you come up and choose 13 9? I think 21 to 16 would be my first piece, and mm -hmm. then I'd have a trouble deciding between the 9 and playing it behind with the 2. Um, oh. But I think enough ideas of like. Volunteering in front of an anchor, I think I would go for it. It's not the place that you like to do it. You'd rather do it on the bar. But it just feels like best of options here. Very early to dump to the two. No, it's six five. No options but to go for it. And a round or two out, a round seems to reduce shots and get one checker to freedom. And with this huge match trail, Bracconi's going to pause to think about whether or not he's got enough of advantage to send. Definitely threats of hitting, but not quite large enough. 3-1 is going to send an extra checker back. Mm -hmm. There. And Stenyak going to anchor and make that stack taller, I think. I don't think he can afford to unload onto the 3, but he's going to be awful tempted to avoid a stack of 6 checkers on the 8. Yeah. Actually, I, I wouldn't hesitate to put the 6 checker on the 8 point. Yeah? Just because you have the racing lead and you're outboarded all these things? Yeah. It's just thematic, and, right? Uh, and yeah. advanced stage. But I kind of expected this from ZZ. I think he likes to uh, not play so stiff like that to find mm -hmm. some action plays and tempos. He's going to air anywhere that's going to be the case. Bracconi tries to get a checker around and is missed for now. Oh, we can make the bar or we can hit and cover the ace. Interesting. Oh. Those are very close. And just okay. immediately makes the bar point, focusing on clearing the midpoint for the race, I guess. He's decided his game plan. Look at this. We would love to switch to the nine point, but uh, not many good fives available after that. And just too stiff of a position to do anything but run from the back. This is a difficult one for me to find. They're pretty close. Hmm. Yeah, exactly. I guess we have the blot back on the ace that allows us to play a little loose. That's part of the incentive. It's Covering. Here. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, that's number is a five. 5-4, five, 5-4. Four, oh, five, four. Four. Yeah. So the covering with the 5 looks nice, and then mm. loose hit with the 4, sure, sure. Not much oh. else. Don't like stripping the the 6-point like that, but for lack of options. This is an interesting decision, too. Do we need to wow. anchor and avoid being blitzed? 
or go for mobility. Uh huh. Because white uh, outfield points are all stripped. That's mm -hmm. why. Mm -hmm. But yeah. still, yeah, making the anchor is, looks so natural. Yeah. I suppose we still have sixes to escape. Mm -hmm. and then all our other numbers can play spares from the six for now. So it's not like we're going to have cracking numbers as a result of this play. And just tactically against this blitzing structure, it, it looks nice for a roll to hold the anchor, huh? That's a tricky one. 11 in the zone, it's a little bit scary to allow him to attack. Yeah. Ooh. So 5-4. This if, roll would have been a lot easier to play. <laughs> yeah, if white would split, 5-4 yeah. would be a good number. Yeah. And now it's very bad. Is this the best we can do with this? Okay, then. What's going to happen? Duplicates aces, and the position looking pretty ugly, but he's down in the race, and Zdeniak has an anchor, so it feels like a trivial take. Um, yeah. Take for sure. Is sending the checkers back worth enough gammons, though? Okay, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, Looks like slightly early, according to the evaluation. I wouldn't yeah. have found that one, but nice find. I mean, close mm -hmm. enough that I'm happy with that cube for sure. Ooh, a dilemma here with the six as well. I guess with the ace. I mean, I think we want to hit the back checker, but finds what appears to be the correct play in covering as well and not getting hit and bored, but mobility and challenging the midpoint feels pretty nice too. It's a bit loose though. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, playing six is interesting. Yeah. Yeah, often uh, keeping the outfield point uh, is better. Mm-hmm. But here, because of black, the two blood, one in the outfield and uh, one in the in, in the bot, uh, I think I like his choice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, white has accomplished a four-point board, but he doesn't dance. Right. Oh. Sixes is going to be a big improvement of some sort, I think. Does it just yeah. continue all the way around? That leaves a direct shot. So a double falcon. Six? Double fuck and um, making the bar point. Oh, that's a nice play. I was actually thinking I'm going to link with the nine uh -huh. and come out to the 15 and figure out my last one. I guess probably just around. This is the intuitive play to me, and they're very close. Your double falcon's mm -hmm. a little better, though. Oh. We'd rather, if we get hit, have our opponent not get a checker into the battle with tempo like this. Okay, I think that makes sense. Also gets the midpoint closer to home. Mm -hmm. So when we're missed, we're closing to to winning our holding game. I th wow. I would have a very hard time passing up the hit yeah. here. They're all very close yeah. though. And the best play is just to make the board and wait for that midpoint to kind of have to come home. Wow. How do you like that? This could be a match lead kind of thing too. I can't see the specific numbers on the 21, 15 to 13 play. But it feels very natural to hit and continue, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's yeah. very hard to resist uh, the te temptation. Yeah. Ah. Our opponent does have a four point board, and we have a blot and board, though, so there's a lot of risk for sure. Certainly, this is going to lose more gammons than other plays. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would hit over the board for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I don't do very well with these like gammon save kind of plays either. They're mm -hmm. very they're they're not very intuitive to me. But there is a lot of merit to it. It's just I mean, we can see that it's going to be a long ride home for white if we just wait. It's not mm -hmm. like it's our last chance to hit and we're definitely not ready to hit, right? So yeah. interesting That's that correct. way. Yeah. And because of the white nine point, it's a little bit isolated. So black has a good chance to get the shot yeah. in the future. Look at the numbers on this play, though. I think it wins almost like 10% more games to hit. Mm -hmm. um, just loses something like 10% more gammons as well. Five one. Okay. Not the hit he had in mind, but that one will do. Mm hmm Now, White had a great chance. Oh. 
Not against Stenyuk, though. <laughs> he always comes in. 3-1, okay, can't oh. hit either. And now Zdeniak's going to have a little bit of attacking chances. I think he's got to link up lots here and just kind of yeah. button up for the potential yeah, attack. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. I don't want to leave two blots in the outfield. Yep, fairly natural 9-6 to six along with it, too. I guess it looks a little stiff and like the points are stripped, but uh, tactically very nice to not have anything else around to deal with but the back checker. Five. What do we do with this? Just going to clean up the blot and play 8-7, to seven, okay? Now he's ready to wait on his holding game instead of going crazy and hitting or anything like that. 6-5 oh, is a good shot. Very good, very good. The 9 could still be tough to clear, but the 12 is out of direct range, so that one we can afford to just leave some fly shots. Maybe now's the opportunity with two blots and board, too. We'll see if uh, Bricconi gets a chance. Yeah, looks like now's going to be the time. Just dump into the ace. Zdeniak ready to clean up his board. 6-3 could come around, but it feels a little... Oh, look at this. We got to do a little bit of both. Oh. Come out to challenge that blot on the 12 and make our board ready for attacks. Not so many hit numbers that don't volunteer a shot on the ace as oh, well. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting find. And does he go for the hit here? I think so. But he's not supposed to. Look at this. Wow. And Zdeniak Ooh. finding the best play actually baits... Uh, a small mistake out of Bricconi, potentially. A large mistake out of Bricconi, I should say. I'm still inclined to hit this and just uh -huh. try to win some gammons and stuff, but but Zenyuk's board is pretty strong. Wow. We can lose the game here. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh wow. Okay. Well, I didn't imagine Zdeniak missing that. That's uh, that's surprising. <laughs> One step closer for Bricconi. Mm-hmm. And he's going to keep down to one blot or try to use the opportunity to clear into the five. What do you think? The distribution looks very nice. That leaves a pretty ugly double fives the way he was playing it, right? Mm -hmm. What do you find here? I kind of like uh, nine to five. I think his play is obvious, but uh, yeah, maybe he avoid the double four hitting and fitting the three point. Hmm. Oh, maybe... I misunderstood something. Yeah, Ooh. I wasn't sure what to do with those, Shefflin. Ooh. Just barely missed. Going to save a lot of potential gammons. Oh, and can't clean up entirely, so I think he's got to make the 8 and clear it later. 6 to 3 looks like nice distribution. This leaves no 2s to play in some events, so like a 2-4 is going to be pretty bad, yeah. feel like we just have more flexibility in numbers from here. Mm -hmm. 6-3 around. Stenyak just waiting patiently. Bricconi clearing safely. Will he get on the board, you think? <laughs> <laughs> so he looks like a favorite to do uh, so. Fernando yeah. will get, a, get the points. <laughs> I don't want to jinx him, but I mean, come on, it's a lot, right? <laughs> I've never seen anything this bad happen in backgammon. <laughs> Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> oh, five, five is not easy. Interesting, yeah. Just peels and expects him to have to run himself. Of course, this is not the safest roll, but uh, not clear that Zdeniak's going to be able to stay for that contact anyway. 5-1 takes a checker off. Nice shot. Mm -hmm. And that is fun to play that way, because as our opponent is tempted to stay back, then the gammons start to go up a little bit. And every now and then you win one in a high anchor game like that. Now that we have to break our board, I think you just save the gammon, uh -huh. right? Yeah. Hard to win when you get the shot anyway from there. These PRs are looking really sharp. As, as advertised from everyone that knows Bricconi, he's playing... Really strong at a 2.6 so far. Mm -hmm. There are a lot okay. of doubters in the chat expecting Zdeniak to win the PR race, clearly. But uh, he's given up a fight for sure. So he looks like uh, Jin. Yep. Mm -hmm. 
I think so. Okay, so two Huawei. points. He did it. Yeah, he, <laughs> finally he did that. All right. Yeah. So Huawei eleven away. Yes. Is this a short break we're gonna take too? Mm -hmm. Okay. You can take some ads shortly if you want. Um. Yeah. The Backgammon Galaxy mobile app. Star membership, high analysis, blunder database, private games, coin games, rating games, and much, much more. Improve your backgammon skills by reading. Oh, oh. We're back at it. That was just a short break there. Okay. Nice opportunity to learn more about the app. Can't wait till that's in the Android store. And uh, 6 2 opening for Bracconi. 5 1 going to hit from the mid. Always tempting to hit two, but only at the most aggressive scores do we do that. Maybe Bracconi would do that at this score. Not Zdenyak with the lead. 3 2 going to anchor. The butterfly. I think Michi's prepared to comment this one, right? You'll tell us <laughs> everything that happens against this yeah. 22. But the 5 2 looks strange. It does he look very strange. 7 to 2. Was that correct as well? He just didn't uh, want to leave a direct shot. Usually, we would play 7 to 5. Yeah, that makes sense. Slot a nice point. Oh, and for distribution, it's just a little better to make the ace instead. I like this. Unstack the 6 some, keep the spare on the 8. Very close decision. Oh. Six five, not far ahead enough ahead in the race that he needs to no, leave the I twenty-two, the I don't think. You know ammunition. Ooh, escapes one. That's a very nice improvement for Zdenyuk. Yep. Okay. White can't make a point, unfortunately. Six two will make a point this time though. Awesome. All right. Great improvement for Zdenyuk. Should he see the light instead, maybe? He can unstack the mid. I don't see a lot of value yeah. in advancing 8-7, to seven, but I think the 22 feels very nice to try to escape with a 6. Yeah, yeah coming to 22 point uh, is a natural play. Mm -hmm. Surprise mm. how close on stacking is here. Oh. I guess he's going to try to make a prime of his own, mm -hmm. is the idea. 6-1, okay. very nice improvement for Bracconi. Yeah, so if Black would come to the 22 point, wow. 6-5 plays a little better. Well, it makes the bar point, though, so I guess this is the idea he had. Mm. Um, but under a lot of pressure now. Yeah, but the running is more important. Yeah, I agree. 6-4, we don't really want to make the two-point here with this priming structure, so what can we do? Are we just forced to anyway? I don't see a nice running idea. If we had that, maybe we'd try Yeah, it. I don't see the alternative. Yeah. Any alternative when we make it. This is one where usually we have the midpoint and we find some sort of down or slotting play if we need to to avoid making the deuce, but just nothing else. Because he's such a big player, he just sucks out. Two down seems like the only option for, yep. for Zdenyuk as well. And suffering not having stepped up. Okay, now White is ready to offer a cue. Hmm, at the score, he's got a lot of attacking potential. I expect Stenyak feels like he has enough play to take this pretty easily, though. And with how much progress he's made forward, there's really not many gammons at risk, mm -hmm. even with this single checker back game. So not the kind of position you prefer to be adjusting the cube at too much, uh -huh. right? Yeah, so because of Black's full prime, yeah. yeah, still 
uh, white to the struggle. Uh. Yeah, yeah, I think so. There's still game in it. And if if white were to close him out immediately, well, he's just got those seven really short crossovers. Mm -hmm. So gammons are going down rapidly every roll in this game, right? Yep. And how about the race? The race is about dead even. Three pips ahead for black. All right. So that makes it a little easier to take on the single checker mm -hmm. backside as well. It tends to be your only game plan. You can't uh, wait for contact, right? You need to escape. Oh, why did a good choice? Yeah, he yeah. didn't double. And uh, slotting? Yeah, that's a tricky find for I, me. Big swing on three. Yeah. It's, I guess it's, it's a clear choice. Yeah? yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. They look really close on the evaluation, but uh, why is that such an easy play for you to uh -huh. make? Why do you feel like it's so clear to slot the four? Uh, because it's it's a priming battle. Ah, okay, yeah. okay. So filling the four point is crucial for white. I and gotcha. three is also duplicated. Yeah, three will be anyway. Oh, good for yeah. yeah. That's a good point. Yeah, three, two, three, four, three, five, three, six. That is really neat that the low threes, well, three, two makes a point, but three, four, three, five, three, six are just escaping anyway, which is a fantastic roll, too. Yeah. Um, tricky one okay he gets away yeah. with it is the cover going to be enough to lose their market now probably mm -hmm. but it feels like there's some market loss on this one but still a lot of play for zdenyak when he doesn't but now it looks uh, like to be a double it could be the last roll very easily and oh. skates he, past that unfortunately he didn't double no and how do we play this 6-1 now now we Okay. This is interesting. Yeah, it's, I was wondering. It's a, it's a headache. Out and lift. How yeah. do you like that? Now we're uh, too loose. I mean, our six is just practically forced. And so once we do that, it's too loose to also allow our opponent to hit in the board. Mm -hmm. So we got to pick which side we're going to open up on, I suppose. Tough one to find, though. Six five is going to prepare for an attack. Should Braconi okay. not find the deuce? Oh, and now, now he finds the cube. Okay. Yep. Mm hmm. It's actually a little bit worse position, I think, than last time, interestingly enough. No, maybe it's better. It's just not likely to change very much. Mm -hmm. So let's Yeah. So one less builder for the four point is a yeah, big downside. Yeah. Ooh. And not just the cover to do it either, right? So yeah. many less. Aces, is this gonna it's not the priming idea to switch yeah. or hit. Mm -hmm. So are you gonna leave him there or are you going for this? What's what's your idea here? Looks like XG prefers just uh, sticking with your prime and leaving him uh, on the 24 point. 5 1. Oh, can continue the blitz. Okay. Oh, also, an option to yeah. step out. It's nice that he used the semi dead checker. Yeah. The three point. Very true. The only issue with the game plan he chose that I see, though, is again just five checkers outside. It's not going to be that many gammons when he does achieve a closeout. So sitting on the winds of the priming battle seemed a, a little bit nicer. Uh, what would we estimate this at? Probably like in the 20s, 20 to 30 percent gammons when he gets the closeout? What do you think? Oh, yeah, between 20 and 30. Maybe closer to the 30 side. Double fours. This could be a little awkward. It is. It's just going to have to sit on double fours and play a bunch of checkers behind. I think. I don't see. I mean, we're not going to slot, I don't think. But maybe there's... Maybe we could play some checkers, six to deuce to avoid leaving shots. It, it just seems better to get closer to home. Yeah. But uh, it's the same. Anyway, double four is a joker. Oh, fours get yeah. there either way. Yeah, of course, of course. But sixes doesn't play this way, he shows us. Uh, yeah, yeah right. that's the problem. Yeah, there's a difference. Yeah, but sixes doesn't play either way. Yeah, but if you take but the checker. I, I yeah. think it's a small downside. Yeah, five three fans, and with this awkward distribution, we're going to be under that twenty to thirty gammons for sure. Mm -hmm. On the low end, four two is going to help he the cause hit. for saving. So why do want to hit? He can pass. Oh, and he gets it. Oh, great dice. Yeah, yeah, and Zdeniak uh, all the way down to about ten percent gammons here. So I think we can still play fairly aggressively. I don't know the way to do it, though. Yeah, five to three evens up, makes all our big sets work nicely. 
Ooh, and a miss, and no, the gamins are climbing. Double is a tremendous joker. Ooh, double two is not too bad. There's a gap. Yeah. And do we play to the ace to keep our five-point board, or do we just start clearing for wins? Oh, we take two oh, off to win gamins. Really? And he finds that very I quickly. I didn't think about that. Me neither, yeah. Is it correct? It is, it is. It was the best play. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. Very sharp I'm stuff. surprised, yeah. That's why he's one of the best players in the world. Yeah. 6-4 clears. Mm -hmm. All right, and he's uh, determined to make a match after out of it after all. Now, Gamma is very close decision. Mm, four three is a miss, though. Uh, loses a roll. Oh. Or does not oh, gain a roll. Actually, he rolled four three. Yeah. So he had option to take in two checkers off. Oh, and volunteer a shot? You think that was worth doing? Okay, okay. Maybe. Five one. Okay, looks like he's going to need a set to win the gammon. Most likely, Zenyak's oh. gonna. Oh, well, he's got to make sure he gets double four somehow. Is yeah, there any way to do it? Yeah, four three. Oh, there isn't a way to get double fours, but we can get four three if we stay outside. But maybe we lost some other numbers, so it just comes in. Okay, okay. <laughs> so three bad dice. Mm-hmm. And six up is oh, gonna be okay. okay. Saves the G. Nine away, four away. Bond on his way yeah. back in. Mm -hmm. Rebello is out of the tournament, someone asked in the chat. That's correct. PR is more fair than match winning chances lost. Marga argued this yesterday during the standard match. Well, I actually don't remember him talking about that. But yeah, I think it's an evaluation of skill. It's just uh, the problem with match winning chances is it emphasizes DMP games, basically. That's when you have the most at stake. So mm -hmm. problems with each, each side. <laughs> Oh, are we talking about the uh, shake? Ooh, sixes, and they're playing lightning fast right now too. Halfway through this game already, and doesn't bother to split. Okay, Zenyak finds that instantly. This looks like market loss for the trailer, especially yeah. here, right? We got to send this. No. Oh, White it's actually pretty close though. Being stuck behind no, the structure. Six shots. Oh, he did that, and hits loose. Okay. Yeah. One of his best. The game is over. Oh, this is not too bad of a shot though. We're going to stack up the 23. This is an interesting look. What do you think about this? Is this more of a blitz position? Is he right to sit on the anchor here? Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, okay, double pass, and that just happens yeah, yeah, instantly anyway. too. Nearly too good. Okay, okay. Yeah, anyway, yeah. He, he wouldn't take a cube. Whatever That's he fair. played. Back to speed, Gammon. I like it. <laughs> oh, Bracconi pretty low on the clock there, too, at 6.05. Zenyak with a lot more clock left. Now, 4 away, 8 away. It's a very sensitive score. Very scary one. Yeah, yeah. yeah the recubes are huge here, right? Yeah. So let's say Black doubles uh, in a Germanish position to win the match. But uh, once the game is turned around and and White off the 4 cube, yeah. it will be very dangerous. Yeah, he'll have to pass quite oh, often. Dance? Dance? And with no points, he has a cure already trailing. Yeah, the four is almost never going to come back, so pretty safe to send it. Wow, that was three. I love how fast he's playing, too. This is super fun. Four, five. Four, five. Okay, not too bad. Enters high. Five, five. five it can't five. be a bad roll, but it doesn't continue the blitz, unfortunately. There's contact. This looks pretty good. Yeah. Only other option would be a sphere on the 8 and cleaning up the 11 to avoid fly oh. shots with Denya kits. Oh, okay. Like fly shot. Yeah, yeah. Both still playing super sharp. In on the on 1 and two. in on the 2, and the attack continues. Don't adjust your televisions, folks. They're actually playing this fast. Oh, <laughs> slotting, slotting. You're not on 2x speed in YouTube. Uh. What else do we have? We could enter deeper and find some four out of indirect range, but that anchor seems pretty crucial. But I think I like his play there. Uh, five one. Oh, look at this. He can go for the tempo to try to mm -hmm. buy time to cover wow. later. Tempo hit. I wouldn't think about tempo hit. Yeah, very strange oh, wow. one there. It's a very tricky. Uh, hits and covers. Yep. Very nice play. Getting some life in this position. Three six is going to make a bit at freedom again. 4-6 is going to wow, hit. Oh, hit in the outfield. Beautiful shot. And 1-4 misses. One four. Now we got to think a little. 
Four can't come around, so I'm not sure. Maybe we enter higher. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I like his choice. I, yeah. That's my play. A little bit of duplication there. Six, Six five, five hits the hard way if he, it wants to. Can he, he afford missed. to... No, he can oh, hit from the 21. Oh. Wow. But can we do this at this score is kind of the question, right? Yeah. Sitting on a two Cuban, threatening to lose a gammon. It's quite scary. And he's doing really well and close in the race to just play around. So this is a yeah, fairly classic gammon save play. Shots. Yeah, look at this. But because of the block, the five point, yeah. usually hitting is correct. Yeah. Uh, wow, but yeah, the body of the anchor is also pretty high. Yeah. I put a special name on that anchor. Oh, yeah? Yeah. On the 21 point? What do you call it? Uh, Phoenix. The Phoenix anchor? Yeah, because oh, okay. uh, in the case, uh, White makes a five point and a three point. Mm, in, that, okay. in that case, uh, the four point anchor is super important. Ah. Yeah, that's why I call it the Phoenix anchor. Oh, okay. Mm. It looks to me like this play would not be correct for money either i don't mm -hmm. think the gammon trade-off is right at a normal score but it does win two and a half percent more games which makes it very difficult for a human to pass up right mm -hmm. we're, we're very used to playing for the win and usually the win yeah. is going to save the most gammons right. too um so maybe the kind of score where it's going to help us find the correct play and he's looking mm -hmm. at it now just playing behind mm -hmm. where we are afraid of the gammons and sometimes that can like break the tie between close plays and something uh -huh. like this, right? So do you think at, at a normal score, uh, hitting is better, superior? I think if I if those numbers stay the same, then it doesn't look like it would be. It looks like we pay a... Oh, he's going to go for the hit after, the, after all and go for the wins. Oh. But it looks like he's paying 10% gammons for 3% wins. And that is huge oh. at this score. Zdenyek could find a gammon for the match win now. And this must just link up, right? Beautiful to just have a racing lead and try to coast home. And he's going to think about, well, do I want to turn this into a oh, blitz when outboarded yeah. now? Which is just an overplay game plan wise for sure, yeah, right? Uh, yeah. Now, this 6 5 looks obvious. Mm -hmm. uh, hitting, yeah, no. It wins a whole 12% more gammons, loses 7% more games, but your opponent wins a lot more gammons as well. 4 5 going to anchor. Okay, and Zdeniak uh -huh. with just a clear lead in the position. Going to be hard to find an opportunity to get a recube in, though. What is your match equity at two away anyway? <laughs> Do you know? I don't know off the top of my head. But that's that's how low uh, Bracconi's take point is going to be. Because uh -huh. he yeah. can just send the cube back on eight and play for the match if Zeniak offers him that weapon. So two away, eight away should be 87%. Uh, oh, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So Zdenyak's going to have to get all the way to an 87% favorite before he can send, or close to it. We don't really like to send much earlier than the take point when mm -hmm. it's, uh, we prefer to lose our oh, market. And this might, that. that could do it though. Wow. That could be enough. It looks like the contact's going to be worth a small percentage. Okay. Oh, and double five? Oh, he's just going to oh, leave? No, I think, he's, I think he's going to count the race and realize he's down too much and stay back here. It's going to be 16 pips still ahead yeah. for Zdenyak after the play. So needs the contact, and usually this would be a claim for money, but where we have plenty of of equity with the contact still to get down to get at least thirteen percent wins. So still no cube action, I think, at the score. Mm -hmm. I think Zdeniak's going to figure that out as well. Probably calculating now what the racing difference is going to be after the play to decide. If he runs, I think it's not even enough to cash either, even with the pure race. You know? So. Yeah. So anyway, uh, after this double five, what is Black's winning chance? Well, I'm cheating and looking on the screen, but right about exactly 80% if he uh -huh. plays it correctly. Yeah. And all the way down to 16.5% if, uh, if he plays incorrectly, mm -hmm. if he uh, breaks contact. Mm -hmm. So maybe uh, Black's winning chance is 84 Around 84? 83 and a half after the play that uh -huh. he's looking at. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so I think he's going to find this. It's awkward. It doesn't make points or anything. Slotting yeah. the two does look a little nicer. Oh, he's played three of them. He's got one more to find. Oh, no. Okay. I think that's part of his problem with it, is just that there's no way to shovel the checkers nicely. Mm -hmm. But the, I, I'm wondering... Wh why? How many runs now? Why, why that? Oh... Uh, 
So the only reason is uh, he miscounted the pips. It feels like that, or he just hates the other alternative so much. But I, uh -huh. I think you're right. More likely that he miscounted the pips. And Zdenyak, as we were saying, even though he's getting in range of that 87% caching point and definitely risks losing his market on this roll, it's better to just take the roll and lose your market at this score and not have to deal with the 8 cube. Um, but I know he likes to be aggressive in these spots too and doesn't fear playing for the match in an advantageous position like this either. So we'll see how he navigates this uh, cube decision now. Taking a deep breath, feeling nervous about it for sure. Look at this. Uh huh. I think this one's stressing him out. Wow. It's stressing both players out. They're feeling the pressure now. <laughs> uh, of course, uh, it's a crucial decision. Oh no, I feel like Bracconi's looking at it and realizing maybe he miscounted the race. Uh huh. Oh, really? I, it feels like maybe he's like, so yeah, shaking his head like he's second guessing his play. I think he sees now that he should have stayed. Uh, oh. Yep, touching the checkers and counting here. Yeah. Ooh, that's going to hurt to realize. Yeah. It was only uh, like 68 in equity, I guess because he's in such bad shape in the match either way. Mm -hmm. um, so certainly not anyone's biggest error in the match or anything like that. But frustrating on one that should feel pretty obvious to make, right? It's uh, just you hate having oversights like that, missing a play, miscounting the race, or just misevaluating yeah. the information, you know? Such a simple thing that happens late in a tournament yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think all good pr players experience the uh, miscounting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In an important match. Yep. Most memorable one for me was that uh, Petko and Ellie match, oh, the world championship, where they both managed to miscount the race and yeah. get through a double and pass as a result. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That it, was wild. It proved that the backgammon is a human game. Right. Yeah, exactly. Even if we understood the correct decision, we're able to get ourselves there every time. Well, can we actually go through the steps to do that as well, right? So, and still, we don't perfectly understand it, so we can't even get that far, right? <laughs> uh, even the bot doesn't yet, right? Yeah, but it's interesting. Uh, maybe uh, Fernand's, oh yeah, Fernand's uh, misplayed, uh, provoked, yeah, his uh, wrong leaderboard. Yeah, I... And this is a tough one to estimate the winning chances exactly in it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so it's not a big surprise. Like I said, I think Steniak's tendency, he feels ahead. I, I feel this way myself. Uh -huh. I, I'm in such a good position that I feel like, yeah, why not play for the match here, you know? <laughs> and leave, make the problem for my opponent instead. Can he evaluate wow. the race well enough to know that he's got this 70%, 17% uh -huh. nearly and needs to take? Yeah. And if we get a drop out of it, that's pretty good too, right? So it's it's really unpleasant for Bracconi's side either way. Mm -hmm. Even if you know it's a crystal clear take, well, most of the time you're just losing the match, right? So, <laughs> so yeah, not a lot yeah, of fun. But, but anyway, if he drops, uh, he's huge underdog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's spending some time to think about it. I'm surprised, actually, that he hasn't made his decision already. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a, it's a little bit of a waste of clock time to watch Zdenyek think for two to three minutes mm -hmm. and not have your cube action already. Uh -huh. Especially when he's short on time. If he might pass it, he's got to play the rest of the, uh, the match on this three and a half minutes of bank. So a yeah. little bit of clock management missed there, too. But... Um, that doesn't look like the body language of someone that intends to take this cube, huh. does it? And he is going to go for okay, it. Okay, wow. Accept it. I oh think he's just goodness. so frustrated oh to have missed goodness. that. But we'll see. We're going to see the match decided on this game. Wow. Eight comes back. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Ooh. Oh, I feel uh, for him. It's such a tough place to have an yeah. oversight like that. You feel like it could be costing you the entire match here. Yes. 6 1 Ugh. was going to be an awkward number two for contact. Ugh. And still, even with that mistake, uh, playing a really sharp match, you had your PR bets. Bracconi looking to take that right now. Impressed with this mm. stuff. They both played really fast and really accurate. But still, of course, anything can happen with dice. Yeah. Ooh. If Sander can win from 2.5%, then Bracconi can certainly win from 16 and a half, yeah. right? <laughs> so again, we realize that it's a human game. Yeah, yeah. 
And this is uh, Zdeniak against Will Snellings ended up finishing the match from a lead mm -hmm. um, at 7 away, 9 away on a uh -huh. 16 cube too. So he's been playing big cubes and kind of getting it all decided on one match like this through the undefeated side of the bracket and surviving so far. We'll see if he can survive one more time and get to a battle with Sander. Definitely excited about the idea of a UBC rematch. Yeah. So, but uh, still, I'm wondering why it's then Nick Ridabort. Yeah, I guess he's just. I mean, it's it's hard to be so accurate with the percentages. If uh -huh, he thinks okay. he has uh, like just three or four more percent winning chances, mm -hmm. misses estimates some wastage somewhere. Well, then he's in double pass territory, right? So if you think you might uh -huh. be around there, maybe he calculated the take point a little wrong. Uh -huh. Doesn't necessarily have two away, eight away memorized. I know I don't. I had to ask you. So any a number of things that that can break down there. And as I said, I just don't think he fears sending it though, right? So his tendency, if he thinks he might be close, is going to be to go for it. Um, which is winning a matches in this in this uh, today for sure. It's a scary opponent to play against that goes for that kind of volatility, don't you uh -huh. think? Yeah. Hmm. The room is silent as we watch this barrel. Uh, too. It's gotten really quiet yeah. in there. So seven checker versus eight checkers. Oh, it's a pretty good shake. Six five is very nice. Raconi can't find that big set to catch up yet. Oh, another six take. two. Zdeniak continuing to perform. And at some point, Raconi's just going to have to start creating distribution to find one winning set. See if yeah. he can get more than sixes or five somehow. He has to roll double six. That's mandatory. Yeah. Zdeniak, oh, it's going to have to be sixes, okay. and he's an underdog to even now, get that chance. He's ready. Five, three oh. takes two off, and there you have it. Zdeniak winning that match. Super closely played. Raconi going to squeak out the PR on this analysis level. Really good stuff from those two. And there you have it. That's going to be your second chance bracket finalist. And we're going to have it, the repeat of the UBC finals. What a yes. storyline. This. this is so amazing. How is that possible? I don't understand how it's possible that Mochi won both last year, right? Uh -huh. And now we're in a similar position where we're going to repeat some UBC action at the world finals. Potentially see Sander have a chance to be mm -hmm. have both titles. Or Zdeniak might get his revenge in this championship. Mm -hmm. And would he be the youngest world champion ever? Who's the youngest world champion of back then? Uh, maybe uh, Peter uh, Thomason. Uh, okay. Denmark. How old was he? Uh, I don't know. remember well, but 20-something. 20-something, so yeah. it'll be close. Okay. Yeah. Um, Zdeniak, is he 23 now? I okay. can't remember. I think so. Yeah. I think so he's an adult. <laughs> 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 Pretty sure. Yeah. But, man, it's really amazing what he's done. Um, been competitive in this game for... For a long while also already you know and and really just coming into his own this year almost taking down the ubc mm -hmm. making this great run here and i i think i have this feeling that it has something to do with the vlog mochi last year did these videos on his run up yep. ended up winning all the events yes. and now zdenyek's doing the vlog this year that's correct sanders yes. doing the documentary i uh -huh. think that's the secret right oh. <laughs> you just have to record yourself a lot uh, and then you get to the finals okay nick uh i want to ask something okay uh, okay uh, this time i also did the video <laughs> every day so what happened to me <laughs> <laughs> that i had some outlier i don't know what's going on there but uh it must be a different i uh, talked to zdenyuk about yeah. it okay talk yeah. to zdenyuk and mochi and i think you'll get there yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, just so, uh, so anyway, uh, publishing a video <laughs> every day uh, will work mostly. <laughs> okay, mostly works. Yeah, huge favorite. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I gotta check those videos out too. I'm sure they're a lot of fun to vlog. But man, it's been super nice to have you on here, helping out with commentary. Um, and and we'll be back tomorrow with the finals at 3 p.m. Show up early at 2:30 because we're gonna do some run up to it with some like uh, lead-in videos to. 
how these opponents got there to set up. So the video looks really nice, and we have like uh, an idea of the whole week tournament and what led up to this. But you've been great, Michi. Your books are awesome. Go check out his website and get all of them, and check out his vlogs that he's been doing too. Thank you so much for your help, yeah. Michi. Thank you, Nick, for having me. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, we might get some interviews with the players here. We've got Sander congratulating Zdenyuk over there by the ca camera crew. I'm going to fill some space and ask some questions and see if anyone wants to come over here and talk to me. But what an exciting match that was. That actually compared with yesterday, you know? Got Victor in the background there. What do we have? What time tomorrow? 3 p.m. Monte Carlo time. 2.30 for the lead-up videos. We're going to do some intros and talk about the matchup and how we got here. So tune in for that. Yeah, congrats to ZZ. Very close match. Thanks for the compliments on the commentary, everybody. Really appreciate that. We got votes for a three-person commentary team tomorrow. More Michi. We'll see about that. Maybe Mark's available to be on there, too. Yeah, 3.3-ish three three the PRs for each and like a .05 lead for Bracconi. Played a really good match, yeah. Yeah, tough beat for the runner-up there. I'm um, really curious how that went and how he made his decision there to, to run. Uh, is Michi ever writing a cube book? I think he's also working on a, on a cube and match play book that might be released later this year, he was telling me, too. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm sure that's in the list. His books are great though. They really, uh, so understandable to all levels of play and really clarify concepts. I love it. Oh, is Denyuk's going to go do an interview with Phil Simborg on the other stream? Okay. I like it. You're going to have to tune into that one to talk to him. <laughs> Nick, what time's the final tomorrow? Is ZZ going to drink Carlsberg with Sandy? We'll see. I hope so. This final tomorrow is 3 p.m., but if you come at 2.30, we'll have run-up video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 3 p.m. No. 2.30. 2.30 to start party. Yep, 2.30 to start the party tomorrow. Love seeing Nick and Mark yesterday. Yeah, I hope I can get them on with me. We'll see about that. We'll find out. We got one person rooting for Sander. We've got one awesome Nick. <laughs> What else we got? Lots of congratulations to ZZ. I'll pass those on. Yeah. Great insight from Michi on the commentary. I love having him with me. I'm going to shut up for the announcements. Then there was a delicate in the day waiting for your opponent. So, ladies and gentlemen, one of these two very strong players will be in the third row and have a champion tomorrow. For final, will be next weekend. Should decide to win the championship. So, look at the same. 